Okay, we are back, and this time we don't have a goal. Mm -hmm. We are going to play. Well, we we will uh, start from collections, yeah. and then it will be open and then just play and do stuff. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I wanted to start with a minimal collection of colors. Okay. A palette is a list of. Mm -hmm. And just put here some color like. RGB. How about we look for a proper palette since we are playing? I let me see. Do because you have your favorite? I, because I one of the things I've learned is that palettes do matter. Yeah. In art. But I wanted to show maybe it's, I don't know. There's this plugin. Do you have this plugin? Uh, which one? Which shows the colors, the open R and the R plugin? I don't think I do. No. No, I don't think. Because I then do. we can create a pol color palette like this. Mm -hmm. And we can just. Well, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's going to be a proper... <laughs> yeah, because usually, you know, most of the time I spend time on the internet, on websites like Colors, blah, blah, mm -hmm. and trying to get colors from uh, Hex. Okay. Uh, thing and work from there. Okay, color palettes. This is one approach. I could just choose a color. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. At least we have something. Mm -hmm. I don't see a color changing now. Oh, yeah. Here. Yellowish. It's a bit mm -hmm. sad yellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is going to be more in the red direction, maybe mm -hmm. like more here. Yeah, I like those colors. Okay, yeah. Um, so we have three colors. Mm -hmm. We could randomly pick from those colors. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a grid, cover the whole screen with squares. Mm -hmm. And later we can go on from there. We can convert the squares into something else. Okay, so do you want to create the grid inside the... Ah, okay. Uh, I, I think probably we want the grid outside of the loop so that the colors are fixed once and for all, other, or do you want them to flicker all the time around? Um, I was going to make them flicker and then show that we can actually use a seed okay. to Super. avoid to, to, to... them flickering. Yeah, okay. So we get always the same random sequence. Yes, okay. Um, so this is how many columns and rows. Mm -hmm. And we can have a margin. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, 50 and... 50. And just to mention, probably these grid methods apply to rectangles, yeah. right? Good. So it happens that drawer bounds, this is a rectangle object, mm -hmm. uh, created automatically, matching mm -hmm. the screen dimension mm -hmm. or the window dimension. Mm -hmm. And then we can call grid on that, mm -hmm. which is very convenient. And we can have some separation also between the cells. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this is a grid. Uh, uh, this is a list of lists, mm -hmm. so I could store this somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. R, mm -hmm. very descriptive. You can see, list, list, rectangle. Mm -hmm. But then it's not so convenient, we cannot draw rectangles mm -hmm. uh, with this. It will complain because it expects a list, not yeah. a list of lists, a list of rectangles. We can use this machine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Flatten. <laughs> Okay. So, so flatten basically what it does. It you can imagine if you imagine a list as uh, uh, things in between square brackets, uh, it eliminates the internal square brackets. That's yeah. what it does. Yeah. That's how I imagine it at yeah. least. Uh, yeah. We have a list of lists, mm -hmm. and this this makes a list with all the elements. Together. Exactly. Cool. Uh, all right. So now colorize them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will go switch to for each. And colorize each. Mm -hmm. uh, draw rectangle it. Mm -hmm. And then before I set one of those colors. Yes, we want to choose from one of the color palette. And for these, we can use random that allows us to choose from collection. We can use this. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it's going to flicker. <laughs> yes, a bit. Uh, but it, this is just for uh, don't do at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Okay. So I'll move it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, different solutions to this flickering. Mm -hmm. We could use actually palette and just pick up mm -hmm. um, a sequential like by using the index mm -hmm. for each index. Mm -hmm. And I it and we use here this modulo palette size. Mm -hmm. So now it's more variable. <laughs> It's not very random. But I think I also could imagine another solution that is to make a, a list of colors mm -hmm. outside the extend loop yeah. Yeah. of the same size of the grid and then yeah. play with Let's that. Let's do that. 
because here we are recreating this grid on every frame and we don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. We could just do it before. Exactly. Um, and then we can use map, <laughs> probably, right. to build the colors. Uh, our colors is going to be r.mapped. And this is, yeah, nice. We can do actually palette.random. Mm -hmm. And now we have, for each, for each rectangle, we have a color. Mm -hmm. So if we, we could use our colors and use the index mm -hmm. of the, exactly. yeah, of the rectangle. Exactly. Mm. Right. Nice. Um, so another thing that we could do now, it's probably to make this, make these uh, rectangles go to black and to their back color mm -hmm. by using opacify. Okay. Right. So they all wobble. Yeah, they all wobble, and yeah. probably, um, I would maybe it's a good idea if they wobble a different frequency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, we can keep creating more lists. <laughs> How, uh, or or we class. could, uh, or we could uh, here apply opacify. Yeah. And then we could do this. Let's do this. Let's make them uh, wobble with a sine wave, mm -hmm. whose frequency is the brightness of the color. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Right? Yeah. Okay, so... So you, you, can, you, you can do sign. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, I will, I will put it in two lines, so mm -hmm. it's a bit shorter. Yeah. <laughs> Ball up. Mm -hmm. Capacity. And maybe you also... Yeah, okay, so... Seconds. Um, yeah. I don't know what the index. I have to import this from yeah. Kotlin Math. Import. Uh, yeah. Kotlin math. And maybe use a, a oh yeah. But <laughs> this is now not uh, vibrating at uh, with brightness, right? It uh, the frequency depends on the right. index of the yeah. grid. Okay. So, so far in, no, so far they have all the same frequency, right? Uh, no, because it yes, ah, yeah, yeah, the face, the face has changed. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. if you multiply the seconds by one dot <laughs> zero plus i, uh -huh. they will have different frequency. Yeah. The some frequencies, yep, a will plus be. i maybe ah. because otherwise, you know, uh, the first one is plus kind of 1.0, no, uh, no, no uh, times 1.0 uh, plus i between brackets. Well, but seconds is already double, okay. Seconds, then <laughs> sorry, uh, out of multiply, multiply, open, uh, uh yeah, i plus 1.0. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> maybe multiply everything by uh, zero dot one, so it's a bit slower. Oh, interesting! interesting. <laughs> and this now the uh, frequency is controlled by the position of the grid, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. where uh, the grid, the, the rectangle at mm -hmm. x y position belongs to, but we can make it uh, vibrate at the brightness of the color. Mm -hmm. So instead of I, probably we can say R colors I. Uh, which one? R colors, colors I, I. And then we should be able to find brightness of this color, right? Yeah. Let's see. I guess. What uh, properties do we have here? Uh, all could, the amount of red. Yeah, linear luminance. Luminance, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. wait. No, it's very slow. It's very, very slow. So I'm going to... Put here one zero. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so this is interesting. <laughs> so how about uh, we substitute the instead of having these uh, uh, um, rectangles, mm -hmm. we put inside it a shape. Okay. At the center of the you know the rectangle in the grid. Yeah. We can have. A shape. Okay, I know how to make a shape. Where Good. do we create the shapes? Mm -hmm. Here. Okay, mm -hmm. we have a list of rectangles. Exactly. I'm going to change that first. So mm -hmm. they are contours. I mm -hmm. uh, oh no, sorry, not here. Oh, we have to map it. Mm -hmm. We have to map it first. Map this rectangle to a contour. contour. So and what's a contour in Open Render? So there's these basic, two basic sh shapes or... The, there's an object called shape. Mm -hmm. That's the most complex. Mm -hmm. A shape contains contours. Mm -hmm. And a contour... Contains segments, a, no? <laughs> yeah, a mm -hmm. sequence of segments. Mm -hmm. So you can basically create any shape out mm -hmm. of segments mm -hmm. and contours. Mm -hmm. um, and if we 
yeah, if we use contours, then we can replace these by other more irregular shapes. They don't mm -hmm. have to be circles or rectangles, but mm -hmm. just based on random points or, mm -hmm. or yeah, something like that. So, yeah, contour. Uh, now I'm going to have to change this program here because it's exactly. expecting here a rectangle. Mm -hmm. But now if you change it to contour, yeah. you, we will see the same thing. Yeah, probably, we'll uh, see the moment. same thing. Exactly. I really like these, uh, uh, like the pattern it creates. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when it vibrates, some of the cells yeah. stay. Yeah. And it's kind of, yeah, okay, let's, <laughs> let's go on. <laughs> so, um, now... Here, instead of a contour of the rectangle, I could create a new contour that's mm -hmm. totally unrelated. We mm -hmm. just have to use the, the center exactly. of, these, mm -hmm. uh, the, of this rectangle. Mm -hmm. And Okay, what, how do we create one? Uh, I can make a shape contour mm -hmm. from points, for example. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and this maybe gets a bit nested mm -hmm. but probably i mean what i would do would create a, a variable points mm -hmm. and i would uh, generate right. them starting from you know using the center of yeah. the yeah so variable points is going to be our collection of points exactly and we use this here exactly and we say close uh, true because mm -hmm. i want a closed mm -hmm. shape and now we can use a list yeah. of vertices mm -hmm. and of uh, uh, have a constructor so that each, each, you know, each point is the point of the shape, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, this would be <clears throat> just to make it happy, the compiler. Mm -hmm. So far it's boring. We're exactly. just creating eight points. So, but maybe we could, uh, yeah, what we could do, we could uh, start from the center and mm -hmm. move around the yeah. center. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, we could use polar coordinates. All right. All right. Polar. Mm -hmm. um, and we need um, we need angles. Yes. But how, how about we make the angle change in a random walk? So we start from an angle zero. Mm -hmm. The next one is not going to be exactly, say, eight, one, one eighth of two pi, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a little bit more, right? And then a little bit more uh, in between uh, an interval. So I have so, a way a way of doing this. Okay, cool. Which would be um, we use a list of angles okay. and we sort them. All right. Okay. <laughs> I never did it like this. I always did the old-fashioned way of initializing a variable yeah. and then adding to that. So, but, uh, so instead of putting polar here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create here random double zero mm -hmm. 360. Mm -hmm. So now, so far, points is a list of angles. Mm -hmm. So I sort. So now they mm -hmm. are sorted. Mm -hmm. um, and now I can map this mm -hmm. to, <clears throat> let me think, <laughs> we, point, we want to create points. Yeah, so from polar <clears throat> and right. uh, polar, starting from the center, there is a, yeah. it, which is a double, I'm going to, Rename this? Yes, because otherwise this is going to shadow probably the it. I think that's the way that IntelliJ complains, right? That the <clears throat> it inside here is going to shadow the, yeah. the one here. But yeah, angle? It, it's not a good idea to have nested mm. meanings of it. Yes. So, yeah. But it's very easy. I have a shortcut to rename. Mm -hmm. So now it's called angle. Right. And then we can yeah choose a radius. Mm, maybe between 20 and 40. Yes. But now maybe something. we want it to be contained into the grid rectangle. Mm -hmm. So Oof. the which is the dimension we choose for the grid? Ah, okay. Contain well or not? We could we can try first without yeah, and see yeah, what okay. happens. Okay, let's do this and plus the center <clears throat> now, right? We have to convert the polar coordinates yeah. to Cartesian and add. The center. Mm -hmm. uh, where is the center? Ah, see we. It center. It dot center. <coughs> ah no, it's not. Uh, ah, we have a double it. Ah, I see. I see. Ah, okay. Um. So I'm gonna rename this it yeah. here. Like. Mm, if I rename this, it's gonna be rect. Mm -hmm. So. <coughs> mm -hmm. Rect punto cent red. Rect rect dot center. center. And <laughs> where are we? These uh, are our points. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there. 
Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. How about we increase now eight so to have a better... And there's another very simple trick mm -hmm. to make them curvy. Right, right. We can... Smooth them. Do hobby curves. Mm -hmm. Oh... I don't like that they have the border. We, we can remove the black yes, stroke. Yes, let's remove the black. And you see the effect of Opacify. Mm -hmm. It's blending. It gives you this alpha blend effect where things come and go. and go. Oh, some are very fast. Yes. Yes. I think we can also use another smoothing technique like the chiking smooth. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, does that work? Uh, so basically, you have to start from points. Mm -hmm. So you would, I think it's directly uh, S-H-A-I, chai key. Like here? Uh, no, it's, it's a function. Uh -huh. Yeah, so try. Yes, this one. Uh -huh. You pass a list of points. You give it a, a certain resolution, like try five. Mm. Ah, right. Five, and then say closed, true, probably, because we want it to be closed. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Oh yeah, yeah, it works. Maybe it yes. works, right? Yeah. yeah, it has this nice, smooth feeling. If we don't want them to touch each other, then we could reduce a bit the exactly. random radius mm -hmm. here. And here we go. <laughs> they don't touch each other. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we can end by adding gradients to those. Shapes. Let's end by adding gradients. Uh, or or so also let's de let's end them by. Uh, I think we can remove them. Like we can at, at you know we can introduce a small probability uh -huh. of removing them and see uh -huh. them disappear. Yeah. Uh, Just a rem as a reminder that we can also we can do that. Yeah. But we can also filter e easily. Yes. So run with again we did this before. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that you can remove like half of them or yeah, uh, or maybe yes. a different probability. Yes, yes. I like sometimes like having just a like a hole somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That 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 makes sense. Yep. And of course, the shape of the distribution will uh, have an effect on the all. Like if you sample from uniform, you will mm. get, if you sample from, you know, a Gaussian, then yeah. you will get some other type. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a story for another <laughs> another day. Uh, but yeah, a, a gradient, yes. Gradient, well, there's many types, but we can just mm -hmm. use a linear gradient. Mm -hmm. Linear gradient. Mm -hmm. And it expects two colors. Mm -hmm. uh, we can so these are the colors where it will interpolate between yeah, right yeah. right uh, i just having black mm -hmm. there because i'm gonna change them later depending on what we are drawing mm -hmm. and then we have to apply it drawer style mm -hmm. draw style no is it shade style shade, shade style. style is gradient mm -hmm. and but here instead of using the fill mm -hmm. uh, we will change the gradient Mm hmm I see. <clears throat> like gradient. There's... So now the shade style will ignore the fill, right? Yeah, you should yeah. use maybe... Ah, because we were using opacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can use white, actually. Mm -hmm. So to make it yeah. uh, the pixel all white and the shaders behind color them correctly. Um, mm. So I'm going to just make one slightly darker than... Yeah. So one is the original random color. The second is a darker version, mm -hmm. and then the main tint is just going to be white and mm -hmm. controlling the opacity. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can see a little bit of the of the shading is very subtle. Yeah, why changing the factor? We can make mm -hmm. it more extreme. So it's All right. more, more obvious that it is a gradient. Mm -hmm. I like using gradients to make things less flat. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically playing with light yeah. in a certain sense. And uh, and you actually, we, we can also make the gradient different from, I mean, vary according to the index. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. So What do you mean? So basically, the factor will be, become a function of the index. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Uh, to make some darker than others? Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. So maybe, I don't know, again, a sine wave? 
Yeah. Uh, depending on the on the index. Uh, yeah, zero dot two. Yeah. Oh no! I didn't create mm -hmm. function. No, I want to import. Why doesn't it suggest? Ah, I think I have to enter something. So mm -hmm. times one point zero. Uh, ah, it does now recognize it. And yes. So now let's see. The thing is, one color is always the original. Okay. And another is the shading a darker, one. darker version. Okay. But it would be good maybe that to create variety mm -hmm. that both colors are affected by this factor. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so shade them both, so but also make them different frequency. Okay. Okay. So that introduces. First, I'm going to change this factor. Yeah. Uh, like dark and factor. Mm -hmm. And create it here for dark and factor mm -hmm. is this number. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to shade both. Mm -hmm. And one is going to be, I don't know, maybe half of the other. Mm -hmm. So now some of the shapes are brighter than other shapes. Mm -hmm. Some seem to be in the shadow. All right. And now the frequencies, no? The yeah, the frequency. Why do we have that? Uh, uh, opacity the, here. Yes. So should we just throw in an index here? Mm -hmm. But we are not using opacity anymore now, right? Because I oh, know yeah. ah, we are because yeah, yeah. we are tinting the the thing. It oh. uses both the gradient and opacity. I really like it. It's very like uh, you can see that there's a pattern, but yeah. it's hard to detect <laughs> what it is. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. So this was our uh, play test for using collections and of course we injected other aspects of uh, uh, of the framework yeah. over render you will find links to the over render guide website to the website to the guide mm -hmm. to the discourse that uh, we have but uh, we hope you enjoyed this as as much as we did we did have fun this we was our Sunday playing with Kotlin yes and open R and R yes open uh, and uh, see you in next episode with new topics and mm -hmm. i'm alessandro i'm abe and bye bye take care <laughs>